six animals you did not know existed. Let's get to it. At number six, we have the panda ant, which looks exactly as you would expect from hearing the name alone. Panda ants are native to Chile and can be found in open, dry, sunny, and sandy areas. These black and white insects belong to a group named velvet ants, but they are actually Chilean wasps. And because they are not ants, they are solitary, not living in colonies or having queens whatsoever. Panda ant diets consist mainly of nectar and pollen. And while panda ants are nicknamed cow killers, the sting of the panda ant is not capable of killing cows or humans as it is often claimed. However, the sting of a panda ant is still said to be unbearably painful. And at number 5, we have the Venezuelan puro moth, an extremely odd looking creature, which was first described by zoologist Dr. Anker in 2009. Since the Venezuelan puro moth is very rare, there is very little information about their diets and habits. What we do know is that they are native to Venezuela and are not found anywhere else on the planet. Interestingly enough, these moths, even though having wings, cannot actually fly. You see, moths are categorized in two different departments, flying moth and silk moth. Venezuelan moth falling under the silk moth category. Some scientists are unsure that this is a new moth species as it resembles the muslin moth, but the jury is still out on the Venezuelan poodle moth. At number 4, we have the red-lipped batfish, a pretty ugly specimen to say the least, being closely related to other batfish. Red-lipped batfish are found in the Galapagos, being a bottom dweller, usually being found within the sandy bottoms of reefs or ocean floors. Red-lipped fish are capable of swimming and crawling, being built like a creature of a sci-fi film. Red-lipped fish also have structures on their head to attract prey. And speaking of prey, red-lipped fish prey primarily on small fish and crustaceans like shrimp and mollusks. At number 3, we have the gray-eared nightjar, one of the largest species of nightjar, resembling a dragon, more specifically toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. These dragon birds are found in Southeast Asia with populations in Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and Myanmar. The natural habitat of the Great Eared Nightjar being subtropical or tropical moist lowland forests feeding mostly on insects, beetles, and moth. These birds nest on the bare ground, laying one egg at a time, taking turns incubating the egg, relying mainly on the excellent camouflage of the plumage to avoid predators. At number 2, we have the Glaucus atlanticus, also known as the Blue Dragon. Blue dragons are a species of bright colored sea slug that are found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean in temperate and tropical waters. This species incorporates toxic chemicals and stinging cells from its prey onto its own skin, providing a good defensive mechanism against predators despite their size. Blue dragons often float on their backside, showing its brightly colored underbelly to airborne predators. The blue color acting as a camouflage against the backdrop of ocean waves, while the grayish backside blends in with the bright sea surface, a perfect example of color shading. This helps the blue dragon to avoid both aerial and aquatic threats while floating in open water. And last but not least, at number one we have the Sega Antelope. Sega Antelopes look like something out of Star Wars, but they are actually native to the semi-desert grasslands of Central Asia. Sega antelope have been critically endangered since 2002. They are known for their long migrations and giving birth to the largest calves in proportion to their size. The Sega antelope's most bizarre future being their huge nostrils that serve multiple purposes, such as an air warmer in winter, filtering out dust in warmer months, and amplifying mating calls. That's gonna do it all for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. This is Animal Oro. See you next time.